Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Tackle Shop Live. What's up, everybody? Man, we got a, a heck of a pile of guys piling in here. Joseph Cascarino's here. Larry Shope's here. Stephen McCarty, what's happening, buddy? I was just talking to you. Lane Graves. Warren Gatrell, Troy Lefebvre, Tanner. How you doing, Tanner? Thanks for driving the van the other day, bud. You were lucky to drive the bass bus. That's right. Nice. Ray Cruz is here. Jesse McNutt, Vince Torpe. Yo, buddy. Lane Graves. How you doing, pal? Yeah. James Hooks here, Michael Bradley. Your sense of humor makes it all worthwhile. Don't make me wait. It's not a funny game. Man, we got a great show for you tonight. A lot going on. A lot. I mean, a lot going on. The old SFT home base has been hopping. How about it, Mr. Nick Wink? It is hot, man. There's so much going on. It's hard to keep up. I'm telling you, we've been just going crazy every man, day, every day. Just absolute crazy stuff going on. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Tackle Shop Live. Um, my name is Mike Acord. Over here pretty soon is going to be George Acord. He's getting a few, few last minute things together. And behind the camera is cameraman Nick. We uh, do this every Thursday night at seven o'clock, as you guys well know, everybody that's tuning in. But uh, we appreciate you guys very much. If you can help us out and hammer your your share and your likes and your comments on, on our Facebook and YouTube, that would be phenomenal. But also, you guys are going to want to check out our Instagram and run over to our TikTok and check our TikTok because we're always putting some different things in different places. So make sure you get involved with all those uh, sites as well. Man, we just finished up Cabin Fever, our last sales event of the year. Um, what are you doing here, brother? You're messing my stuff all up here. Um, but anyway, man, we just finished up our Cabin Fever sale, and it it has been absolutely a spectacular sale uh, um our our final sale of the year absolutely unbelievable and um i like to thank all you guys i like to thank all of our awesome customers for supporting us through the whole first quarter and all of our events bass fest was an absolute smash and everybody that was here thank you so much good seeing you guys uh small mouth saturday had a little snow snow uh problem but we fixed that up no no problem at all and um uh, a lot of guys came they 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 uh saw that the roads were good and they all came out but uh had a great event for there and everybody learned some great things about smallmouth fishing and then uh, winding up with cabin fever this past weekend what a great show um man we had i want to thank these guys personally uh mike iconelli was here Thank you, Mike. Appreciate you very much there. Greg De Palma, appreciate you, brother, taking the time out and coming here. That was awesome having Greg here and Mike Iconelli. You guys got a chance to talk to them and, and really pick their brains well. But really, really, one of the guys who really, really not surprised me, but just super, super nice guy, Bernie Schultz. I mean, everybody just fell in love with Bernie. He has great stories. He's been around a, uh, not only the business of, of bass fishing, but, you know, fish fishing, uh, uh, tournament fishing for 30 plus years and all the knowledge that he brought to the seminar. That was so cool. So thank you, Bernie, Bernie Schultz for showing up. Uh, and man, we had a great BFS seminar both days by Ryan Buttermore. Everybody loved that. He broke it down, talked about BFS, what, what BFS is, where BFS is going, and uh, showed showed all kinds of cool tackle and equipment that he uses in his BFS fishing. 
that was really neat. Then we had two uh, guys here uh, doing uh, striper and light tackle seminar for the, for the Chesapeake Bay, uh, Steve Griffin and and uh, LJ from uh, GI Jigs. Those guys are the best down there, and it was really cool to talk with them about the techniques that they use to catch a multi-species uh, down there. But people don't even really realize within two and a half hours of where we're at, man, you can be catching mackerel, flounder, bluefish, stripers. What else were they catching? Cobia, redfish. I mean, they had a list of stuff. Oh, speckled trout. I mean, they had a list of, of, of crazy fishing. And they had top of the line equipment uh, they are I believe it they are all top of the line man they're from, everything from their boats to their tackle is amazing so that was fun to talk with those guys so uh that was a busy weekend thank you guys for coming that was fun um uh, both days man just just rocked it just rocked it in here both days uh and then last night we had our uh glx g loomis glx launch party here uh, at the shop, the brand new GLX series rods, which I'm sure George is going to go over and, and tell you all about the brand new GLX that was launched for the classic yesterday. We were part of it. We got them in the store. We're one of only a couple dealers that got them. Uh, a lot of these other guys aren't going to get them until uh, a week or so from now, but we were, we took part in their launch and, uh, had a great launch party here, man. We had pizza and drinks and, and, uh, Patrick from, um, shimano was here he he uh he helped us out a lot with that and and uh, it was fun we had a great crowd we gave away hats we gave away t-shirts and tackle bags or uh weigh-in bags it was awesome it was a good time had a really good time with that um but we don't ever stop so tomorrow night afternoon evening at uh between 3 30 and 4 we're gonna do the saint croix launch they have a brand new rod the psychic rod from St. Croix is being launched tomorrow. We have them here. They're in the shop. We're going to have a launch party here on uh, tomorrow at, like I said, between 3.30 and 4. Uh, you guys can come out, check them out, shake them around, be the first in the country to be able to hold on to these rods and see what they're all about. Very, very exciting. Um, very exciting deal there. You can, you can move over a little bit that way widen it out and uh so that's going to be really super exciting um to have that whole thing going down um tomorrow so if you guys are in the area and you want to check it out stop in 3 30 be here and uh, you guys will be able to hold the brand new saint croix psychic rod which nick and i and george we were fishing them the other week I like them. And Nick likes them. They are a spectacular rod, uh, super light, super sensitive. So you guys are going to love to see these things. So that's going to be real, real exciting to do that. Um, and then we're going to start really start pushing right now. We're going to we're going to start talking about our SummerSlam tournament, which goes off on May the 19th. And that is our biggest tournament in the area we have a ton of people to come and do that it is one of the neatest tournaments that you guys can possibly get into and what we've done with this is we made it so that anybody can fish this tournament we made it so that you don't have to be an expert in the area on the susquehanna flats the upper bay portion of the of the of the of chesapeake bay you don't have to be an expert down there you all you got to do is see the thing about this is is everybody is a winner in this tournament because the entry fee isn't cash. It is product. You're going to buy Shimano G Loomis Jackal and Power Pro. It's $250 of those products. You're going to buy into the, the event. And uh, that's our sponsors is, is uh, Shimano G Loomis Jackal and Power Pro. You can buy $250 mix or match any, any of those products. And that's your entry fee into the tournament. I know a lot of you guys uh, fish it. I know you a lot of you guys loved it and have a great time. We're going to do it again this year. The buy-in for that starts April the 19th. It's a 30-day buy-in window. That's set by the manufacturers. Uh, they want us to do it for a 30-day period. Um, that's why we do it like that. It's 30-day buy-in. It gets everybody in the tournament. They, 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 know, they can control what's going on. We can control what's going on. Everybody's happy. So um, that's the deal with that. Check it out. 
You're going to start seeing all of our advertising switching over to that here pretty shortly. And if you have any questions at all, you can call us or stop in the shop and we will help you out with getting involved. But listen, if you're a guy who just doesn't tournament fish a lot or you're a guy that says, man, I'm not going to go down there and throw my money away and be a donator. Why not come down and check it out? And I'm telling you, we had guys that were never there before that cash checks. They were they were right up in the money. They were never there. They fished it one day for our tournament. And then here they are cash and checks. So anybody can win these events. And the thing about it is, is when it's all over and maybe you were the guy that didn't, that was first out of the money or you didn't do that well for the day, guess what? You got your $250 worth of tackle to take home. Well, yeah. I mean, a guy would be like, hey, my buddy bought a new reel and we got to go fish tournament. Yeah. They didn't care. That, you know, they were. Yeah. They got something for what they, they paid for. Well, that's, that's the whole thing behind it. It's a, it's a tournament where you can get involved with tournament fishing. We can bring more people into the sport. You can see what it's all about and not feel like you're donating the money. You know, you're not out the $250. You got something for it. You got a rod, you got a reel, you got tackle, whatever you were, whatever you bought to get in that tournament, you were, you were, that's what you're taking home. You won that for the day. So it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool event. It's something we worked on for many, many years. This is our, I don't even know how many years this is. It's, it's been many years we've been doing this tournament and it keeps getting bigger every year. Um, so make sure you get in early in, in April 19th, starting April 19th. Make sure you get in early because they will, um, uh, we, you know, we will fill up, you know, so you got to make sure that you get in and, um, you know, get your purchases done right away so that you're, you're entered in a tournament. We'll take care of, get you guys in. So fantastic. A lot of fun. Nick and I, we have a good time. We go around, run around and take pictures of everybody and video everybody. It's a lot. Yeah. Mike. <laughs> just might jump on your boat and uh, make you yeah make you famous make you famous yeah that's our thing we go around and if we see one of our competitors drive right up to you and jump in your boat and then interview you on the water it's pretty fun so um but we have a good time with it and um it, it's something that we do for you guys because we want more tournament fishermen more people to get involved with the sport so that's coming up that's where we're switching gears to and you're going to see that coming on big time so don't forget tomorrow 3 30 the st croix Bassmaster Classic launch of the Psychic, Psychic Rod uh, will be going on here at 3.30, and we're going to run that till 6, and you guys can hang out and check out the rods. Uh, and who knows? Well, maybe maybe have some pizza, or well, I don't know. We'll figure out what we're going to do. It's going to be fun. Anyway, we got a great big show for you guys tonight. And, uh, man, there's a lot of stuff coming up, man. You got the Bassmasters Classic coming up here, so we're going to talk about that tonight. And... Uh, we got some really cool things with uh, with that. We're going to talk about some of the anglers and and uh, and and see where this tournament's going to go. But first, we're going to do a section of this show which we love dearly, and that is called Tackle Talk. <laughs> All right, George, what is going on and what is new here at the headquarters of SFT Tackle? There's a lot new, uh, as usual, but we're only going to talk about we're only going to talk about three items tonight. Um, we're going to talk about the new GLX series of rods first. Um, Exciting exciting yeah um what's yeah. the history of the glx rod tell us talk, talk talk to us about the glx history yeah if you guys have been around you know loomis for a long time you know glx was brought out back in the mid 90s um it's been a minute <laughs> you know 94, 95, I want to say. But what was interesting about it was the naysayers. So we had like the fishing community, not so much the not so much G Lumis's competitors, but you know, the fishermen were, you know, this was one of the biggest, most advanced graphites at the time. I mean, no other company had anything even close to this. Um, 
and the fishermen were like the biggest, you know, naysayers about the rod. You know, you can't make a rod out of that kind of graphite and, you know, it's too brittle. They're going to explode. They're going to break. And turns out none of that's true. Mm -mm. You know, here we are, you know, many, many years later. And, you know, the, the type of graphite that is used in GLX, you know, which paved the way for many other high end rods, you know, is, is, a, is, is much stronger and lighter. And then the other thing that was interesting was the type of, like, if you want to call them resins or glues that they could use and uh, the, the curing process, you know, which that opened up. So what really happened was we got, we got incredibly light, incredibly strong, incredibly sensitive series of rods, beautiful to look at, you know, which kind of paved the way for, you know, the rod industry to, you know, climb into that that next level of rods, which at, for fishermen's great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for all you old school GLX guys out there, you know, this is the fourth generation. And, you know, the light, the lightweight is still there. You know, they had a little hiccup. They had a little hiccup in, in, in the, in the second generation. They, they, you know, they, they tried, they tried, I don't know what their thought process was, but they tried to make a rod. You know, they were just getting into all these paints. They were getting into, you know, they were exploring and getting into these painting, these rod blanks. And it was both cosmetic and it was, it, and it had a little bit of, uh, they were pretty. You know, it was cosmetic and it had a little bit of a strength purpose, but, you know, it added weight. Yep. And so, uh, you know, the rod, the blank was still awesome and, and the rods fished well, but they were a little heavier. So the third generation corrected that. And now, I mean, now we have just like an incredibly light rod. Um, one of the things, one of the things that I like is the real seat, the CI4 uh, plus re real seat. So it's a carbon, you know, real seat. These real seats are molded for the blank. So there's no filler in there. You know, the dirty little secret of some of the rod building out there is, you know, the, the, the real seats are some, somewhat generic and you have to you have to build up the space between the blank and the inner inner diameter of the real seat. We don't want that. So we have a carbon real seat right on the blank. We have the the, the finest grade of cork there is, grade A cork. Um it's pretty too. The gold the gold on the black there um down where it says GLX George. Yeah, beautiful. Just uh, you know, real clean, real Nice logoing on there. Yeah, it's, it's exactly like it was when they originally, first series they launched. They went back to the new logo, or the old logo. The new logo is the old logo. Yeah. Uh, the fish, the Fear No Fish logo is no longer being used by the company. Yep. This is what the rod looked like in 1990, whatever. That logo, this color scheme, and, you know, so it's classic. You can see the... Logo on the tag, um, the shirts, the hats. You know, this is the this is the old block. This is the old block. You know, logo for the company, which is back. This is now the new logo. Um, the black and gold was how GLX was, how IMX was back in the day. Fuji K guide frames. You'll notice these frames have a little bit of a bow to them right in here. So the, the, the leg, the leg coming down is bowed a little bit. Um, here and here, um, even on the single foots, there's a little bowing to it. And that's, um, it minimizes braid 
rapping on your guide. I mean, it happens to everybody. It's annoying. You pop a jig, you pop a snag free, and the braid wraps on the guy, almost ties a half hitch on there. That that minimizes it. It kind of throws it, kind of throws it off of there. SIC frames. So we got, you know, a whole bunch of models and casting. Some of the new models that they that they have are the bladed jig rod, mm-hmm. um, which is a three power rod, very well suited to a wide range of bladed jigs. The jerk bait rod, that's a new model um, in the in the GLX series. Um, and there's there's a few others. Let me show you one of the spinning rods. By the way, the reason that cork was full on that casting rod, the reason that cork was full, that's the old school MBR models. So way back, way back in the day when Gary Loomis, you know, started G Loomis, they're, they're, they had a, a MBR series of rods, Magnum Bass rods. It was probably <laughs> four or five models. They had a, a spin jig rod, SJR, spin jig rod. Um, and, you know, today, you go up through the, through, the, through the G Loomis lineup, you know, from GCX all the way up to NRX. And the MBR rods all have a full cork. The SJR rods all have a full cork. Okay? Now your your jig and worm rods, be it spinning or casting, there's a jig and worm rod casting, split grip. Jig and worm rod spinning split grip. So for all you guys that like the split grip, the lighter weight, the weight reduction, it's it ne- never went away. It's always been here. Yep. It's just that if you pick up an old school model like an MBR, which personally I'm extremely partial to, um, you'll get that full cork. The other thing about the MBRs and the SJRs is the tapers are fast. They're 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 original. They're they're traditional. You know, back in the back in the day, fast taper was trend setting. So you know, jig and worm rods are extra fast. Be it spinning or casting, and this is one of the one of the models I really, I really like. It's a uh, it's a six ten drop shot rod. In the jig and in the jig and worm, I mean, it's not jig and worm. It's a, it's a DSR drop shot rod, but in that same style. Um and it's one of a cup they have a couple drop shot rods in in the in the Loomis GLX series now. There's a couple different drop shot models. I think there's three. Um they also did all the 75 spinning, the 901, 902, 903 for all you uh big water guys that like the big long spinning rod. Um so yeah, there's the spinning guide train, K guide. Beautiful, beautiful, uh, and they're and they're still SICs too, right? The SIC rings. Yep. <clears throat> yep. And uh, five twenty-five to five fifty. They're they're pricey. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And you know the one thing about it is, with a rod like this, and with a lot of the brands that they're top rods. One thing to remember, um, you know, 15, 20 years from now, that rod's still relevant with what's on the market. And that whole time frame, you've been fishing with the best. Mm-hmm. So you pay you pay up front, but you know what? You're you've got that that headliner forever. So that's funny you say that because uh some of the some of the original GLX rods are still kind of relevant in our our play. We have a couple SJR 783s that we uh, we break out every now and again and fish them, and they're some of the original rods that we've had since since day one. So that's how I got hooked on the MBR 783 for jerkbait fishing. 
Uh, and, to, and to this day, I have an, a, a, an original 19, whatever, 95 model that I fish with uh, all the time. Um, 6.6 six medium heavy fast. That's just, that's the rod that got me hooked on that for jerkbait fishing uh, throughout years of trial and error. But yeah, that's, that's your GLX launch. Um, yeah, you know, most of the actions, uh, Robert, are fast taper or um extra fast taper but they do have the dsr series which is drop shot so you'll see their more moderate tapers softer softer rods for drop shot well, they're not moderate they're they're the, the drop shot rods are extra fast they just have a lighter tip a lighter tip yeah. Yep. yeah yeah glx has fast and extra fast you know that that graphite's not used for crankbaits yeah uh for, i mean they could build a crankbait rod with it but they don't but yeah, so that's your GLX. Um, we launched them at the official launch party last night. Last night, yeah. Um, yep, had a great time with that. And you know, we just wanted to re up them for all you people that missed that. Yep. So there you have it. You want to you want to check them out and touch them, and you know. What have you? Come on out the shop here, and we have a full rack of them. We have a very nice selection for you to uh, peruse. Uh, GLX. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Tammy, you're, Tammy Geeman, how are you doing? And you're exactly right. You do get what you pay for. Absolutely. Yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, so next up. We're gonna go. We're gonna go to a to a like a stunt bait. Like a this bait. This bait's a top water, but it's kind of like it's it's in a class all its own. So some of you guys and gals know about this bait. Um, I'd like to say that locally, and for a pretty big territory of the Mid Atlantic states, it was made famous by a win and a high finish on a kayak tournament on the Susquehanna River and it's called the Gizmo. <laughs> I'm going to take I got one out of the pack here. I'm going to go over with it with you. You know, it's evergreen, okay? So first of all, it's very high quality. Okay? Second of all, it's very different. So let's let's examine one and let's talk about the gizmo. Let's talk about why 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 would they make a bait like this? Um and craziest thing in the world, Nick. Why would we want to fish this bait? That might help a little bit there, Nick. So this is your gizmo, okay? It's just a little bait. It's uh let's get a measurement here. It's literally two inches long. Okay. It's two inches long. It's a number two hook. There's a top view. Right? Number two hook. It does have a weed guard. You can kind of see it right there, actually. Yeah. See the weed guard? That's a little thin nylon weed guard. These two little legs up front here, and we'll turn them up this way to show you that. Those two little legs right there, this one right here, let's hold them up this way. So this this right here, these are hollow, okay? Back here in the back, it's weighted. So it's kind of rear weighted. So what happens is you have to fish this on a spinning rod, a light to a medium light spinning rod. Evergreen actually markets a spinning rod called the gizmo rod, which is a finesse type rod. 
um, with a solid graphite tip. And it's a great all-around finesse rod, but they actually call it the gizmo rod. But you have to fish this on a, on a, uh, you know, a light to medium light spinning rod, preferably a long rod, because you want to get a cast, a decent cast. And then this thing sits down in the water a little bit. And, you know, the skirts are quivering. And, and as, you, as you work it, these little legs grab the water. And it just kind of, it kind of walks around a little bit. And it kind of pops around a little bit. And, you know, it's just a, it's a category all its own. A bug category, I guess you would call it. Uh, a... Dragonfly, I don't know. The thing, the thing. Looks like if it was real and it bit you, you'd feel it. The thing about that, this bait, which I don't think a lot of people understand, is um, when it first came in and guys, we, you know, we were very skeptical about it, but we, we uh, went off of a, a tip from somebody, one of our, one of our guys, um, and we brought it in and we, we had them set on them, didn't really do much with them, but guys started fishing them. Once they figured out how to fish this thing and in the, in the right conditions, it absolutely smashes giants. I mean, like, like they catch a lot of 20 inch plus fish on this thing. And it's just, just crazy bait that went absolutely crazy. And then we sold completely out of them, bought what we had, what we could get from the factory and sold completely out of everything. And then it's been dry for, a year and a half, two years. I don't even know how long. It's been forever that you can't get them. So what's why we're so excited about it is it's back in stock. And for everybody that's been looking for them, yes, they are back in stock. They're in the shop. And uh, they are available to purchase. But uh, a stupid bait that you would never realize that you would want to throw it turns out to be one of these great shallow, clear water baits that just absolutely smash giants. Here's a question. So are they throwing that bait with fluoro or mono? Braid. Oh, just straight braid. Yep. Wow. Yeah, you fish this bait, straight braid, tie braid right to the hook. Yeah. Uh, it's number two. It's a number two really sharp hook. Um, it's an elastomer material. So kind of think about like um like Z-Man, like TPE elastomer. So it's, I mean, the body's. The body's tough. Um, comes in a bunch of colors. This is actually green pumpkin. There's also a black, which looks a lot like green pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pearl white. Um, there is a killer bee. Right? Got to have the killer bee. There is a frog. Got a white belly on this guy. And then there is a dragonfly, which is kind of like a root beer. Any of you frog fishermen out there, you'll call it natural red. Um, there's also two new colors uh, that we haven't even put up on our website yet. They just came in yesterday. There's a site black and there is a bubblegum pink they can't they literally came in yesterday we haven't even we haven't i mean they're not even up on the website yet um there's a couple other colors that that are out of stock but you know there's one two three four five six plus the two new colors eight um so get them while the getting's good. Ten dollars and ninety nine cents. Yeah. Um, and there you have it. The bug bait. I don't know. We're we gonna start a new category. What else will we put in this category? I know one. I mean, this category doesn't have to be just tiny either. This could be like mega bugs. Well, you got the you got the uh, the little uh, uh, mega bass. Get chiclet, chiclet, uh, 
Oh, you're talking about the little cicada bait. Cicada bait, yeah, yeah. that little little bug oh, bug I, bait. I can't think of what that's called, but you're right. That would go in there. We, we got we got those. That's called a grand siglet. Grand siglet, yeah. I'm okay, close. I was close. What I call Taylor, it? We're gonna make a list here. What I call it chiclet. <laughs> yeah, chiclet. We're gonna make a list here. So we got the gizmo. I was close, Nick. Uh, if anybody out there wants to chime in, chime in. We have the grand siglet. Yep. Definitely in the bug category. Now, let me throw this out for discussion. The pompadour, which would also be like the mega bass eye wing. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, this could be like, I mean, it's a bug looking thing. I mean, it can't be, it's no fish that goes like this, right? Maybe a flying fish in the ocean. So I asked, can I put, can I put the pompadour and the pompadour junior, which I must say, gentlemen, you know, my feeling about the pompadour and the pompadour junior. Oh, you have to put I'm the a crazy, pompadour put junior. The, the head and crazy crawler in there then. Uh, they don't make it anymore. It's not made anymore. No, nope. wow. but that's what started the pompadour and the pompadour junior. I'm, I'm just going to go out here like this and tell you this right now. Pompadour. What's this? John uh, La Lashley says battle beetle. I don't know. I don't know who makes that that one, John. I do not know the Battle Beetle. No, sir, on the Jitterbug. That's a hard no. Mr. Joseph D'Souza, Jitterbug is not in the bug category. Oh, you got to have because some it has sort a bug, of wing. Because it has a bug on the end, Jitterbug. It's not you in have the bug to have, category? You have to have some sort of wing. Yeah, but it has the same. Now, that's in the lip. That's a walking bait. You got to have a, you must have wings to be a bug. Huh. Any entomologist out there want to chime in? Oh. Yeah. Uh, you, you boys are leaving me down now. You did good. Yeah. You did good. Grand Siglet. You, I have got nothing for me. I was talking about the Grand Chiclet, and there we go. I got one. I, I'm thinking hard too, and I can't think of it. <clears throat> Am I leaving one out that you can think of, George? Um, Rebel makes a, a a cicada cicada one, but I think well they make a they make a crick hopper, they make a buzz toad, they make a toad, but they're getting rid of all that stuff. I mean, what what popped in my head, but you said it had to have wings, and I don't know if it's considered a bug, but the Helgravite. Okay, no, that is a bug. No you know wings. No. Now no let wings. me ask you guys. Where's this? the wings? Oh, let me ask you. Where's this. the wings? What does that a Helgramite morph into? I don't know. Well, let me tell you, the son of a bitch has got some wings on it now. I mean, it comes in like it's HIA International Airport and lands on you at night. So there you, you go. You will walk on water. Well, the thing about it, the thing about that, this bug that George is talking about, once you see one and then you have one land on you and you have that in your that picture in your mind, you will jump out of your boat. You will absolutely jump it's out huge. of your boat. Oh, they're, they're, but George, they're are, are we counting Helgramite? Helgramite's down. All right. That's a go. good. How That's can a, you count a Helgramite, not a jitterbug? What's a jitterbug turn into? Well, it's a it's a same thing that a a, a pompadour turns into. Pompadour's got wings. All right. That's what happens when you drink Red Bull. So it turns into a Dobson fly. These guys are right. Exactly. Yeah, they're Do exactly right. Dobson fly. And if and they, you've ever been night fishing and had one of them suckers land on you, and they got pinchers on them, I'm not kidding you. This pinchers well, are in, they're inch not and quite a half. That big, no, they're inch and a half, really. inch and a half, two inches long. Not really. And they got razor blades strapped to them uh, all up and down. Not true. Uh, yeah, this scared the living hell point. out of so you. He's, he's he's saying the size is much bigger than it actually is. That's why we got a bubble scale. Well, I got a dance, right, George. I got a That's dance right. that I do in the boat. It's called a Dobson fly dance. And let me tell you something. It's really. It's pretty spectacular when one of them things land on you. And all you have to do is hear it because they, they're loud as hell when they fly. You know, you hear them flying and everything. We used to go catfishing on the river at night, man. Those things would tell you they land on your back and you there's no way to get to it, right? You're trying to reach and then you start doing this crazy dance on the thing. Your arms are flailing and you're jumping around. It's horrible. It's brutal. It's horrible. Absolutely horrible. Well, we have four. We have four. If, if anybody comes up with anything during the show, kick it on in. Um, and we are officially calling the gizmo from this day forward, a member of the bug category, bug category. Okay. 
That has been established on the 21st of March on Tackle Shop Live. And it's probably going to end up in Wikipedia at some point in time. I'm just going to flat out tell you that if you want them, you better get them. Because it could be in one of these deals where it's two more years till we see them. And I'm telling you that the craze is crazy. When they when when you get that low clear water, it is absolutely stunning what these things do. It really is. All right. Evergreen gizmo. That was fun. Now, last but not least, and I and I kind of have a uh I kind of don't like to talk to you all about something that's not on our website, but this next product is a project for us to put on our website. It's it's a custom bait. Um, it is nationally recognized, but it's not, it doesn't lend, it, lend itself to, it's going to be a project for us to get it on there, okay, is what I'm trying to say. And and I, and I want to let you know it's here. After, after a couple years of having it on the list, many, many of, of you are, 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 Customers um, who we respect and listen to have asked repeatedly. Um, sorry for the long delay, but it's it, it's just a little bit of a different vibe with this company. They're 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 a, what they are is a custom company that's made it big time, and you know they're ready for prime time and they're in it. It's called Bullshed. So Bullshed, and we're going to keep it simple. For those of you in the swim bait world, you're all dialed in on this. This is nothing new for you. If you're not, then we're going to help you get dialed in. So here's a, and, and this I think is very helpful, a size comparison. So let me get them all evened up by the tail. I'm leaving them in the package because they're, you know, they're, they're custom baits. I don't want to get them out. And so we have a four inch a five inch and a six inch. And as we get this dialed in, we will be going all the ways up to a nine inch. So bear with us. These are what's called resin baits. So, you know, your, your custom glide bait, you know, the, the glide bait world, the swim bait world is, is all, unto itself with like these great builders, these innovators, you know, these, these, these impressive anglers that have taken matters into their own hand. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, so a resin bait is solid. The body is solid. Okay. And it has a dense, characteristic that gives it a somewhat of a unique action and sound not don't discount the sound the hooks banging off the body what have you but there's many different characteristics to a resin bait of course one of the most famous is the bull shed so here's the shad profile of the six inch okay a good looking bait this is a thread fin shad color, right? This is dirty bone. And we make it easy for you on color selections. You can have thread fin shad, <laughs> or you can have dirty bone. Two best colors. That's all, um, that's all you need. Now, your little four-inch guy here is a slow sink. And I would say he's got a set of number four hooks on them. And they might even be sixes. They're small hooks. Um, and then your five-inch comes in both slow sink and fast sink. And he's got a small set of hooks on him, too. I'd say they're about a four, a size four, maybe a two, probably a four. And then your six-inch comes in both slow and fast. 
And he's got, looks like ones, triple grips. Um, there's also a bull shad herring. So a bull herring, which is going to give you that. Let's do a profile test here. Shad profile, herring profile. So the herring has a skinnier body type. Right? Um, and the herring comes in dirty bone and thread fin shed. Now, there's also, because we're coming into the prime time of the year for the rat, there's also the bull rat. And I would say this has at least one O hooks on it. Um, big Lexan lip. Okay, big wide. Wide wobbling Lexan lip. Uh, bubble gum tail, worm tail. You can change out by pulling the pin, putting a new tail in there when your worm gets all chewed up. Triple segmented body. Of course, rat fishing in the spring is famous. You know, the, the bull rat is going to sit right alongside the spro rat as, you know, Deadly springtime baits. This comes in two colors. It comes in gray and it comes in brown. You dirty little gray rat. Mm. Um, All silent uh, baits. Yeah. Solid yeah. solid body. Yep. Resin. They make their own noise with the body. <clears throat> yeah. You get a body clack, a body click, you know, which is different. You get a hook swing against the body, which has a, which has a different sound. Um, deadly baits and, you know, well-deserved reputation. You know, the, the company was started many years ago, full blown custom and, you know, all of your hardcore swim bait guys throw bullshit. And that's pretty good testimony to the company I'm, I'm sure the owner of the company is very proud because his baits are spectacular uh price range you're going to be in that 50 to 60 dollar range so as far as a resin custom bait very inexpensive um so yeah you know and it fits in with you know it fits in with uh some of the favorite swim baits that we're throwing right now kind of segues nice into a little, you know, we're catching some nice fish on some swim baits right now. And we're throwing, of course, the mag draft. The mag draft, it, this is mag draft season, okay? All over the country, you need to be throwing this bad boy right here. You need to be throwing it early and you need to be throwing it often. Um, six inch and eight inch mag draft. Okay. Deadly. This color is called white back. Deadly color. Uh, deadly bait. It is killer from now all the way through the spawn. I, anywhere in the U S of a, um, also making the starting lineup is a couple of glide baits. The Mega Bass, um, show you the package here. <clears throat> I slide 187R. Okay. Intermediate. Two and a quarter ounce. Um glide bait. This baby is is in the starting lineup, okay. This is a, this is our our one of our go to. This is the perfect size glide. It's big enough to draw fish. It's <laughs> compact enough to get bit by a lot of fish. It's a hell of a bait. Um, single joint. It's got a nice sound to it. Comes in all your, you know, you expect the colors you expect from Mega Bass. Um, this is in their fine art series right there. This is called um, something IU. Let's see if it's on here. There we go. 
This is called S-E, the letter S, the letter E-I-U. Fine art, perfect color. This guy's on our starting lineup. And then, of course, always tied on a rod is the Chad Shad. Um, this is the Spro Chad Shad collaboration, which is also a, you know, a solid body bait. Um, not resin, but very resin-like. Very nice bait. Very, very, swims great. Um, uh, extremely, extremely happy with the performance on this bait. So that's our, that's our, that's what we got going on right now. We are slinging some swim baits and we will continue to do so hardcore until we get into the middle of June. Nice. George question. So the baits that you just looked at, which was the, the, the Chad, the Chad, Chad, the Chad, Chad. The I slide. I slide from Mega Bass. And then you compare them to the bull shad. Um, I might know a guy that just recently got a bunch of bull shad. I took notice. <laughs> and uh are you throwing the same rod depending on both of them? Well, the smaller bull shad um is a little bit lighter, but when you get into the six inch bull shad, and here's the uh here's the um Chad Shad, okay. Which, you know, for a lot of newcomers to glide baits, the sheer size of the bait is the first intimidation factor. But the six inch bull shed's the same size. A lot of the perception and, and what I'm learning in, in my swim bait journey, I, which I've been a couple years of real hardcore, like loving me some life with a swim bait rod. What I'm learning is the perception of the angler is not you, you have to forget about that that's not in the in the in the natural world it's kill or be killed and fish are predators and bass are top predators um in their little ecosystem so they that you know they're not they don't rationalize and think like people they have a little tiny brain about this big and their whole motivation is eat survive and reproduce um so what the what the swim bait does in my opinion guys and correct me if i'm wrong but the swim bait is more like hunting than it is fishing and it causes a a, a reflex action um that usually ends up colliding with one of the bigger fish in the area and the other the other thing about swim bait that I, that I would like to say is, you know, your mindset needs to be a little different. You know, like I had Sunday, I had an outstanding day with the mag draft. Outstanding to add five bites. I think I had six bites. I hooked five fish. I landed five fish out of six bites. Uh, to me, that's outstanding day. Okay, um, they were all. In the four pound range, and one, and they were small mouth, and one was five plus, one of my biggest smallies I've caught in a while. So, you know, my partners in the boat were doing other techniques, and they were out, they were just pounding fish. So, you know, your mindset is different. You're, you know, you're, you're hunting. So, I don't know what your guys' theory is. I know Mike's throwing a lot of swim baits right now. I know Nick's, uh, getting all wrapped up on swim bait fishing. But this is the time. Nick went crazy on swim baits the other day. He filled, I think he filled an entire tackle box up in one one purchase round. Yeah, it was one of those things where I had to buy the box special for all the baits I bought, you know, got. Yeah. And I'm excited because, you know, you know, George has been very excited about it, you know, and I got on to the 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 mega bass um the other one you brought up there. Uh, the I, sl I slide. No, the oh the uh, mag draft. Mag, the draft. mag draft. That mag draft, there's that's a special bait. Oh, that very is. special. And when they're on that, that's yeah. all you need. Yeah. But there's a lot of other baits to try and see mm. how fish react to those baits as well. Well, first of all, in the swim bait world, there is a we're talking about a culture with Custom builders from one side of the country to the other, north, south, east, west, all over the globe, 
wherever bass hunters live. So, you know, the commercially available swim bait, glide bait, is like the most minuscule percentage of what is out there. So, you know, that that's that has nothing to do with this conversation. This conversation is about the power of the swim bait, both soft and hard, the glide bait, the wake bait, and the and the various actions of the very and and you know as anglers we love to debate actions and brands and you know what you can do this in your swim bait world until you know the party's over i mean it, people are it's 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 an amazing subset of of fishing it really is uh you know the the and the builders the the, the private little uh guy who just is building this awesome swim bait and uh you know, who, who, you know, does something a little bit different than the next guy. And, and there's just so many awesome baits out there that first of all, you can't get them. And if, and secondly, if you do, they're 250, $300, you know, they're, they're high end baits that are perfectly kind of staged up. So it's like, it's almost like they, they have these baits and then everybody tries to make them a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And they, they keep getting better and better and better through evolution and next thing you know, you got these baits that are three, four, five hundred bucks. I have a little bit of a take on that. So for the most part, you know, there are some custom baits that are just the holy grail. But for the most part, um, a good quality glide bait is as good as the next good quality glide bait. And and I don't mean like if you want to talk about the bait, I'm talking about catching fish. I'm not talking about like, like for it's like everything. There's there's no secret bait. Now what happens is, um, you get caught up in this world and you get caught up in these custom baits and you catch you know, you you it's 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 part of it, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the actual fishing and catching of fish, and you know these baits, these examples here, are spectacular. There's, they're great. As we've said, there's like countless options, which makes it fun. Yeah. And some of those are even better yet. But that's a debate for another day and another conversation, um, which will be fun also. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I know I like my uh, Chad Shad, and I like throwing my uh mag draft and i like the glide baits that i throw and learning them and seeing the fish that's the thing that's fun part about it is seeing the fish that follow it i like my mega bass too yeah yeah so yeah the bull shad is in the house the bull herring the bull rat um that that product offering will eventually make it to the website um it's a couple weeks out because we're backed up also, we will be growing it. And, you know, this whole swim bait thing, you guys are traveling with us. We are growing our swim bait selection literally, what, weekly, monthly, sometimes every weekly. Yeah. That, 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 whole, that whole thing is evolving here. It's growing, and we are having so much fun with it. Um, absolutely. And we're going to revisit this topic over and over and over. Okay. Um, so next up, we're going to have a little fun with the Bass Masters Classic. Yeah. Mm. No. Yeah. Maybe. Absolutely. Could be. Um, well, I mean, we're we're got to talk about the Bassmaster Classic, and we're going to do that right now. A little thing we like to do: tournament talk. Your homework got corrected. You spelled psychic wrong. Physics. You spelled it psychic. Oh, wait a second here. Nobody knows what the hell it is because we're not allowed to take it out of the box until tomorrow. So we're not even allowed to see the freaking thing. Don't even know what the hell it is. There's no paperwork on it. 
Well, there is, and, and you spelled it wrong, and and you just got an F on your homework. Whoa, 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 whoa! You really want to go down that path? Because <laughs> Not really. I said, George, what's the deal with the rod? You said it's physics or no, psychic. Said psychic. You said psychic. P A physics. I wrote it down right here. P H Y S I X. You said S Y X. And I said, all right. I wrote it down. And we're wrong. I, I th he might be wrong. How do you know? Nobody knows anything about this thing. It's the most unbelievable thing in the world. All right. Doug is officially wrong. But we're freaking excited about the rod. And, and, and we should know because we fished it. And was, there any, was there any writing on your rods? Oh, yeah. I know what it's called. I didn't want to correct you. Oh, so this makes me look like an ass now for... <laughs> Hey, what, what is it called? It's it's the the physics. It's physics. Yeah, and and these are the rods that I took down to Florida when I went on my trip. Yeah, and I was catching all these fish with them. Yeah, and I, I had a great time with those are, rods. Is there writing on yours? Oh yeah, there is. There is labeled. They're labeled yeah, up. Yeah, oh okay. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know if they were labeled or not. I never even never even saw the labels on it. Yeah, I fished them too. Yep, and you know they were there was well, we'll, we'll anyway we'll see them tomorrow. Psychic. We're gonna launch them. We're launching them at three, three ish, three ish, three thirty ish, three thirty ish, three thirty ish. We're gonna launch them at three thirty ish to four ish. Yeah, depending on our our mood ish. Yeah, and our situation ish. That's right, ish, ish. And, because, and, uh, and it's gonna be on a this Friday. This place has been crazy ish. Yeah, and Fridays are freaking awesome in here. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of a lot of things going. On, a lot of people here. So Fridays are awesome. So it's going to be a great, great launch. It's going to be a great time for everybody to see them and uh, come down here and check. We're going to shake them and wiggle them and everything. But depends on what part of the country you're at. Some people say physics. Some people say psychics. It's just wherever you're from. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. You just have to uh, understand that you got an F on your homework tonight. I think I asked you and you told me psychic. I mean, I have it written on my board. If you if you want to get the camera. You got enough cord to get in the office. We'll show them. We'll show them the board. Yeah, that's. I wrote down exactly what you said, and, you, what, and, and that's what I'm saying. We, we, we. George is the buyer. He don't even know what the hell they're called. They're upset. <laughs> We're not upset. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> you got an F on your homework. Yeah, whatever. Uh, maybe a D minus. F's kind of harsh. Well, the whole Do thing they, is uh, actually Nick should Nick Nick should take the blame for this because we were talking about it the whole time in here. On it. Well, Mike, you were you were committed, and I wanted you know you were committed, and I'm like, well, we didn't we didn't launch anything. All right, Nick. So, well, right. here's the deal. You did a heck of a job, Mike. But, Here, here's the deal. Whatever. We're gonna we're gonna continue to chop it up, but we're gonna save all the psychic physics talk until tomorrow. Yeah. And at three ish, thirty ish to four ish, thirty ish, four ish. Right. That's a good one. Psychic physics. Psychic physics talk. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna break these things down. We do have some firsthand experience with them. Yeah, we're gonna talk about the this babe this bad boy is a little different now. We're gonna break it down. We're gonna chop it up, and uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get real with some Saint Croix tomorrow uh, in the afternoon. Yep. And well, uh, for all but, of you that come out for the party, we're gonna show you we're gonna show you the the grand tour. But let's save but, all that talk for tomorrow, boys. But right now, we want to talk about the biggest tournament event in the world. Hands down, the most spe spectacular event you'll ever go to. The Bassmasters Classic. This is so exciting time. Best time of the year. Right now. Starting tomorrow. And we got to... We got to break this thing down. We got to break this. Hey, team, down. let me hear from you. <laughs> B team, let yeah. me hear from you. It's un yeah, unbelievable that it's here already. But um, the, the tournament's on Grand Lake. Oh, the Cherokee, I guess they call it. Grand. But we call it Grand Lake to make, to make it short. But, uh, you know, temperatures warming up out there. So you got a couple things. You got warming trend coming you know you got uh so the weather pattern weather pattern is going to be a, a favorable in the and and uh in the in, in this tournament i'd like to talk about the weather for a minute yeah if i may yeah i took the liberty to do a little research yeah as of about 650 tonight tulsa 
forecast read like this. Tomorrow, day one of the Classic. Low of 53. High of 73. East wind 5 to 10. Possibility of John Cox bagging lemon on a wacky rig general high. That's tomorrow's forecast. Saturday, we got a little cold front situation. We have a low of 39, a high of 65, northeast 5 to 10. A little cold front, going to take them spawning fish and make them say, yo. And uh, possibility of Koyo Fujita putting six transducers on her ass and putting five big ones in the boat is good. Okay. He's probably got the biggest lithium battery ever made hooked up for this one. The whole back of his boat's a lithium yeah. battery. The whole back deck is a lithium battery. <laughs> Sunday. And here's where she gets a little dicey for the top. Is it six or 10? Top 10. Whatever. The cut. The last day. Top yeah. 10. Check this out. Low of 52, mm -hmm. high of 67. Oh. Okay. South winds. So we went east, northeast, cold front comes around, south winds, backside of the front. Oh. 20 to 30. Nice. Hold on. That Gusts one. to 40. That, ah. That'll make things interesting. That's Greg Hackney all day long swimming a big old swim jig up on the bank. Hey, you know what I mean? But here's the problem. You got to make it to day three. Oh, he'll be there. Yeah. Well, don't you worry because John Cox is already in the shallows up in the bushes with the wind. The wind is trying to push him through the bushes. John Cox comes around the other side, flips in, catches the big one for the win for the Bassmasters Classic. On his, on, on his uh, four tracks. <laughs> on his four tracks. That's right. No okay. electronics. He's cutting it all off his boat. Got to go out there, bare boat. There's not on. Yeah, he's taking everything off, going out there, bare boat. He's going to fish shallow. It's going to be a shallow bite. He's going to be whacking him on his wacky worm, his spinner bait, and and uh, and pitching around a jig. I don't even think the man owns a spinner bait. John Cox for the win. He is that who your win is? I'm just we're not uh, we didn't get there yet. John, I mean you're John just, Cox packed twelve thirty seven hundred planos full of Max Scent Generals. <laughs> A dozen packs of wacky rig hooks, <laughs> and he's ready. He's ready. And when they rigged their rods today in front of the media, it took him five minutes. <laughs> he tied up five wacky rig generals. <laughs> yeah. And he had, and he had a, no secret there. And he had Nick. a six-pack of Coca-Cola. He's ready. He's ready. <laughs> now, let's chop this up a little bit. Let's talk about this. So, setting the stage, I'm looking at Spawn slash pre-spawn i'm looking at early spawn yeah with the majority of the fish pre-spawn yeah okay that's what i'm thinking now you're gonna see a lot of techniques playing you're gonna see the sight guys you're gonna see the john cox with the with the general right yeah greg hackney's flipping the jig uh, the shallow guys are going to be Jason you know, Christie with a spinner bait. Well, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the sight fishing guys. I'm not talking about the shallow guys. I'm talking about the sight fishing guys. Mm. You're going to see a lot of sight fishing guys, especially on day one with those forecasts, especially with all the fish they marked Wednesday. They're going to be running and gunning crazy sight fishing. That's, that's how you're going to see a lot of it go down. Uh, day one, and and you're gonna have John Cox with his general. Uh, you're gonna see some real good sight fishermen flipping, you know, beaver style baits. Um, Lee Livesey, he loves that shallow water sight fishing. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna see that's gonna play hard on day one. Obviously, all three days you're gonna have your scopers, right? They're going to be scoping with their jig head minnows of every size, shape, and description. Um, and we have talked that to 
freaking death. And, and you know, with that, George, with your scopers, you'll you'll see jerk baits probably play. Jerk bait is going to be big time with the out offshore scopers and the scopers that are like, you know, the thing about Grand Lake is it's a ton of rock. The banks are are a ton of like, like it's like almost like little bitty baby bluff banks and it's all rock and clay and a ton of floating docks. They have all these like boat houses that are floating and yeah. they got, they got, cause the lake fluctuates. They have a bunch, I mean a bunch, when I say a bunch of docks. So in those spawning cuts, when those fish back off, <laughs> they usually back off around that deeper water around those docks. And so you'll have guys scoping like out in front of those docks. And a lot of those docks are, you know, the locals have brush piles sunk around them for crappy fishing. Um, so you'll have, you know, a lot of scoping done right next to the bank, right out in front of those docks. And those fish, those fish are going here and here, but right now they're here. And that jer the jerkbait is a major player there. And I think you're going to see, you know, the jerkbait prevail as one of the top three baits of the classic. Um, along with some sort of a scoping minnow, which, you know, every soft plastics company has got multiple versions of, you know, something along the lines of that little Z-Man jerk shad, three and a half, four inch. Uh, baby Z2, Z2, that kind of stuff. Name, I, your, name I your poison. I guarantee you one thing. Skeeter Steve is so freaking excited about this tournament being shallow, and so, he so wants somebody to, to, to win the tournament, you know, flipping in shallow water. He's, he is, this one is just, it's right out of his tip, fingertips right now, you know, and he's so excited. He was going off about it the other day and very, very excited about it. Here we have checked in from Bill Durburo. I'm sorry I butchered that, but we know who you are, Bill. Um, Bill is tuning in from Oklahoma. He just fished the Bassmasters Kayak Tournament. And uh, we actually know Bill. Yeah. Um, 10 Killer Lake, yep. He said 10 Killer beat him like it owed him money. <laughs> like he owed it money. <laughs> Um, he'll be at the classic tomorrow and he said the weather's been nasty, you know, so tomorrow's really the first day where those, any of those fish that are going to move up are going to move up. And you know how that work? You know how that usually works? They don't move up. They hang just out. So real close to the spawning areas, the transition banks, the deeper cuts, the jerk bait, the scopers. Yeah. And George. Old Tyler Williams with the jig. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to be absolutely. He's going to be throwing that jig like there's no tomorrow, man. Dan Vaughn, I think you're right. Don't you don't want to sleep on Milken. Oh, no. He, oh, you no. Know, he's hot right now. So I'll tell you another, a, another, another strong, strong bait in that area of Oklahoma this time of the year. Crankbait. I've been there. I've done it. I fish tournaments this exact time of the year on those lakes. The jig. That is a lake. Now, I want to make this clear. That is a lake that you can put a jig in your hand, Tyler Williams, and not pick another bait up for the entire three days. You can do it all on the bank with a jig. George, out there, is there a specific type of jig? Well... <sighs> You know, this time of the year, and again, if you're not familiar with that turf out there, it's a lot of rock, all rock and, and clay. Um, the, the, there's some wood. There's some wood. There's a ton of flo floating boat docks, a ton. Um, you know, the wood, lay, the laydowns, you know, a lot of them are like pine and like, like old, like post oaks, blackjack blackjack oaks um and it's a it's a harsh environment for jig fishing you know your jig has to be 
really, really good at not getting snagged. You know, so I'm I'm a I'm a my my jig of choice out there had a flat sixty degree eye, but that's kind of the part of the country, one of the parts of the country where the finesse jig, like the not the little bitty bitsy bug, but like the, the like the finesse style jig really took hold the short cut front half of the skirt. Ball head you know, style. They fish a ball head with that flat 60 degree eye. Jewel. Jewel Bay Jewel, company. the yeah. Jewel jig. That's where it kind of I think what is that they from out there? Well, the Ozarks, yeah. yeah. And, they're, th- they're and this is an there. Ozark Lake. The yeah. uh green fish tackle itty bitty, which we talk about all the time. You know, the Z-Man Power Finesse, the Dirty Jigs, Luke Clausen Jig. Uh, those style of jigs are going to play. They're going to play big time. Um, and the jig fishing is like grind it out. And you get your bites. And you get the right bites, but you are grinding it out. And that Tyler Williams is going to grind it out with that jig. Um, so the jig... I'm going to check him off my list. The jig is going to play because that that's just what you do out there. There's two things that area is known for up on the bank this time of the year. It's known for that jig, and it's known for a red kicker blade on a spinnerbait. You know, if the water's dirty, they're going to be throwing a red kicker blade on a Colorado or an Indiana gold blade chartreuse and white spinnerbait. That's huh. just what that's just what happens. And that like we're also where they throw like the the the, the rock crawler crankbaits, those style crankbaits and stuff. That's out a there. big that's a big player. That's a big player. <clears throat> I, know, I know that's in those types of lakes out there. That's a big player, you know. Um and I don't know where the crankbait's gonna come into play. You know, where I'm just I'm just supposing I, I'm gonna I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. They're liking a spinnerbait out there. Everybody's talking spinnerbait. Everybody's I'll tell you talking, what I'm going to do about the crankbait. Talking bait. jigs. I'm going to I'm going to make a prediction on the crankbait. You're not hardly going to hear anything about a crankbait. There's going to be some guys throwing it. I don't know, but you're not going to hear a lot about it. Well, not, well, not with that kind of weather, man. That's like crankbait, spinnerbait, freaking jerkbait, jerk, well, yeah, jerkbait, yeah. Yep, jerkbait with, with that wind. Now. Big old waves crash on the back. Another thing that this weather pattern is perfect for. Is. The glide. And the mag draft. Maybe we change it up. Mm -hmm. You are going to see a guy catch a kicker or two on a glide that's going to be a difference. We're not talking about going out and catching your limit on a glide bait. We're talking about getting that, you know, that kicker five pounder. A five pounder is going to play. Well, I mean, pre-spawn, pre-spawn fishing, man, the, the glide bait and the swim bait, killer big fish bait. You, you know, this is when they do it. Like, you saw them at the last tournament. They were throwing the, the big glides at pre-spawn, pre-spawn uh, largemouth, big, well, big and, boys. And good point, because last week's event, which was the Red Crest, you're not looking for five big bites. This week, yeah. you just need five big bites. Yeah. And, George, I know you did your homework. Oh, I'm homeworked this. up. What do you think it's going to take a day to win this tournament? Um, I don't think it's going to take the kind of weights that we've been seeing this year in tournaments. I think it's going to be a little, a little lighter than that. Um, I think tomorrow is going to be a huge couple, huge bags. And by huge bags in this region of the country, I think tomorrow you're going to see a couple of 20 to 21 pound bags. And by a couple, I'm talking like two. I'm not talking like a couple, like I'm just using the word couple to broad brush stroke. I think you're going to see two big bags tomorrow because of the sight angle, because there are some fish going to be up. There's no doubt about it. It's a warm night. Tomorrow's going to be warm. There are some fish up. You're going to have your tacticians like John Cox, who you have to understand, John Cox isn't going to fish like one creek arm. He's going to fish one third of the lake. 
is he's he probably has a custom made Fortrex is the reason he doesn't take it off the boat because he's probably spending like 350 pounds of thrust so that he can just go down the lake, you know, on his trolling motor. Just, 350 pounds. And he probably has the vision of a hawk, right? Had a question about sunglasses and lens color from Sam and Sam. Tomorrow's going to be the day that matters. And, and check it. They got all kinds of gnarly weather coming in. And you're going to have to have, if you're playing this game seriously and you are a sight man, you can't have one pair of glasses. No. You, I mean, you can, but it's going to hurt you as much as having the wrong rod and reel in your hand. You know, when it comes to looking at them, the sky color and the water color will change your lens color. Now, for me, I'm going to go with two. I'm going to go with a copper base with a green mirror. Now, you can buy a copper base with a silver mirror. You can buy a straight-up copper base, and now Costa has the old Pimp Daddy gold lens, which is copper with a gold flash on it. Mm. Whatever. That's what you have on your head right now, the copper with green. Copper green. Yep. This is this is going to be your 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 workhorse. The other one is going to be in the mornings, and depending on where you're at, is going to be the Sightmaster yellow with the silver flash lens. So it's it's sunrise silver, silver flash, silver mirror. Sunrise silver, meaning the mirror. Those two colors of lenses will allow you to, and what you're going to see on a tough on a tough sight is you see the lateral line. You don't really see the fish right away. The first thing you pick up on is the lateral line when you have the right glass on. So that's going to be a big deal. That's a great question by Sam and Sam. I see I see a big 22 to 24 pound bag coming in tomorrow the first day. I think somebody's going to bag sack up a big giant bag and then they're going to fall on their face like, you know, and get more back to reality, but I think there's going to be a real big bag coming in, but I think it's going to take 20 plus pounds every day to to win the tournament. And I think guy, a guy who wins the tournament is going to have 63 to 65 pounds. Well, I, the reason why I, I mean, this is, this is, this is, ladies and gentlemen, well, this is the Bassmaster Classic. He watched Lake, Lake Fork and uh, this is the Bassmaster <laughs> Classic. These guys can find these damn fish Hold up. On, on these lakes. I'm right, I'm writing this down, people. So if you want, if you want to put pencil me in there, pencil me in for 63 5. 63 pound, five ounce for the win. Okay, that's going to be the winning weight. Not what it takes, but what win. actually wins. Nick and then George. I'm going I'm going 65 pounds. <clears throat> wow. 65. Yep. And I thought you fell over and hit your head. Yeah. Well, yeah I'm telling yeah. you right now. So somebody's going to come in with a big 20-something pound bag. I don't want to give it away. 24, 25? I'll, I'll explain later. That's okay. okay. Explain next week. No, no, no. When we make our pick. Okay. I'll explain why okay. I went that All right. way. All right. So I'm going to be a little below that, right? Because I'm looking at 20 to 30 out of the south with gust of 40 on the on the final day. Um, I'm looking at 39 degree night drop on Friday night into Saturday morning. Uh, I'm looking at a big first day, and I'm looking at solid second and third days. Um, so I'm going to be at like... 57-3. Okay. And I think we'll prove that out to be. The only thing I'm worried about with mine is the third day with the win that you said. You didn't think about that now, did but you, when you I were popping faith. off with he broke it faith. down for you. Freaking pickup truck load no, of fish. No, no, but I have a faith because eh, I think All it's right. going to happen. All, All right. right, so now let's talk. Let's talk anglers. <laughs> Let's talk anglers. Let's talk your top five. You have a top five? Oh, you want me to go top five? No, no, no just, just, just your top five, and then we're going to pick our. Okay. Well, I yeah. think it has to do with their techniques, too. Yeah, I, I think it does, too. Right now, right now we, we have the jig playing. We have the jerk playing. I have crank on my list, Mike, but I have it low. Uh, the various scope baits, the swim baits, the glides. Yeah. Don't forget the old mag draft now. Yeah. Because what's on that lake? A shit ton of boat docks. You know what you can do with a mag draft? 
Skip that mother. You, I mean, this freaking thing skips can to you, my loop. Can you imagine fishing those damn boat docks with all them wires and shit t- attached to them? Yeah. They're like the worst yeah. docks in the world to fish. It's tough. Did you ever fish wall and paw pack, Nick? Oh, yeah. I mean, with, with all them cables? Oh, yeah. God, what a nightmare. What a nightmare. Okay. So what about, guys, when you're thinking about your top five? I think you need to think about the last bait on the list. And just to quickly recap, jigs. This is no particular order, but these are major players. Various bed baits, correct? Yeah. So your Brock Mosley's. Yeah, those guys with the uh, with the flipping. Your uh, Johnny Cox. The Strike King um, creature bait, white creature bait. The crank. How about that? How about the big bite bait fighting, uh, fighting, frog. fighting frog? Yeah. In tilapia magic. Come on now. Ah. How about we talked about the swims and the glides? The last bait that I'm going to throw out here is going to make you think about an angler that doesn't live too far from here. Chatterbait. Oh, you got to be throwing a chatterbait. Okay. Well, who are you talking about? Brian Schmidt. Thank you. So, with that being said. Brian Schmidt with the swim jig and the chatterbait. We talked about weather. Mm-hmm. We talked about the baits that are going to play. We, we even went as far as to pick the weights. Now, uh, let's talk about some anglers. Mike, give me your, give me your, give me a five angler rundown in no particular order. No particular order. I'm going to, I'm going to start and say one of the guys you really got to watch out for is Tyler Williams. Jig man, but he's also a scoper. He can fish him shallow. He can fish him deep. And then I got Milliken. He's a scoper, but he also likes to throw swim baits, and he's not afraid to throw the big tennis shoe out there and grab up and snatch up a six or seven pounder swimming around. Well, he scopes them with a glide. Yeah, with with or without, he can. I mean, do amazing it. talents. Um, then you got your jig man, Greg Hackney, going to go in there. He's going to fish all every single rock and tree and pick it apart. And he man, did you ever see him cast underneath them docks? He'll get that jig where it needs to be. He'll be popping some fours and fives for sure. Then you got to go with the running gun master, Jason Christie. He probably has 7,000 spots on the lake. Uh, right now, he probably has 250 betting bass marked on his GPS that he knows about, and he knows the lake as good as anybody. He's going to be running and gunning. Big wind or not, he's not as scared. Jason Christie. And then... The man, the myth, the legend, shallow, fishing it shallow, grinding the bottom, tearing it up, riding the wave, surfing right into the beach. Johnny Cox is going to be right there, and he's going to be in the mix too. This is going to, this may be his tournament to win. This may be the tournament for John Cox to show these young bucks, up and comer. Video fishing, game fishing, guys. He's going to teach him a lesson, and this may be the tournament for him to do that. Hmm. I like it, Mike. That's my breakdown of top five. But honorable mentions. <laughs> no honorable mentions. Patrick Walters. <laughs> He'll nope. name the, the whole jerk field. <laughs> bait king. Patrick Walters is going to step in there. He's going to be firing that jerk bait out there and scoping him up on a jerk bait. One of the best jerk baiters around on the live scope. And then, uh, of course, Joey Cifuentes. 47 more, and you got the whole field man. Yeah, that's what I'm waiting for. And Fajita. So there's there's my there's my scopers. There's my top five guys that I think. And then I'll pick my winner. Nick, you ready? When you're ready. You want me to go? You ready? I am. Give us your give us your top five. All right, Mike, I'm in a different world than you are. Yeah. I I uh Oh, I know that. I am because I watched the last two tournaments of the elites because that's what I pay attention to. And both tournaments, I was told that the fish were going to be moving up any moment now. And these guys on the bank are going to get them. Yep. That didn't happen. Right. And this is going to be another one where those guys are going to try the best they can. But I got to tell you, this is where I have. Dan Milliken doing what you said he's going to do. Yeah. Koya 
doing what you said he's going to do. Yeah. But I will throw some names in there that you didn't mention. I'm going to give a shout out to one of our favorite guys, Cooper Gallant. Cooper. I think he's going to be Cooper solid. A, I'm also going to say Jay uh, Procurzik. Yep. Sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is going to be on him. Oh, yeah. And somebody's been very, very consistent lately that we never talk about. Justin Hamner is ah, also. Yeah. Because he's, he's pretty diverse. Now, I will say some honorable mentions just because you did as well. Yeah. I like Tyler Williams. Yeah. I'm pulling for him yeah. every time. He's a jig guy. Yeah. Cool dude. And, and, and I do think um, this is a tournament. If he can get on him, uh, Brandon Palyanik, if he can get on him. But it's going to be either hit or miss with him. Yeah. I'd love to see Brandon win one, you know, for sure. But uh, he's a great guy. But I'm all in on the scopers. Because I've seen this movie. <laughs> I know how it is. <laughs> right on. Right on. Well, I mean, that's that's you got to go one way or the other. All right. What's your top five, George? Well, you know, back in the day when he fished FLW, um, there's a guy that has had multiple top five finishes on Grand Lake in FLW events ranging from what is now called the Toyota Series to the Tour. Also won at least one event with FLW on Ozark Lakes. And his name's Matt Arry. Mm -hmm. um, he was also second or third in the Classic to Hank Cherry on his second win, so he knows how to handle the classic. George is doing some some real research here. I've been following this guy forever. Plus, um, they just wrote an article about him, um, like a little short piece. My, my boy McGuckin wrote a little short piece on him, but it it kind of it kind of rec rec recouped a lot of what I I've, I've been watching this guy for a long time all the ways back into the FLW days. Matt Airy is is definitely going to be in the top three of the classic. Yeah. Uh, no particular order. I got John Cox. John Cox, mm -hmm. uh, the last two mm -hmm. years, was on a meteoric pace. He's off to a little bit of a slow by John Cox standard start this year. But he's got... Probably next to Steve Kennedy, he's got the best attitude of any person fishing. Now, I work with some people that have better attitudes than that. Cameraman Nick probably has the most admirable attitude of any human I've ever met. But John Cox is right there with him. He doesn't get mad. He doesn't get... He can have the worst freaking day of his life, and he's just smiling. And that's, that's what you have to have in this event. I got Milliken in there because Milliken, and I never, ever, ever was a Milliken follower until he started fishing the elites. I, I just didn't follow the guy. I, I, I just don't follow. I'm not a big social media guy. I'm getting into it now. But I am a Milliken guy. I like this guy. This guy catches fish. His videos prove it. His performance on the Elite Series proves it. His performance in the Opens proves it. And I, anybody that has his boat wrapped, me, I'm all in. You know what's cool about him now that you mention that, George? He kind of reminds me a little bit of Happy Gilmore fishing the Bass Elites because he's like talking to people as they're there, inviting them into spots, doing things that nobody would ever even think that it, you should be doing in, in a professional and it's just like this guy's different. He really I, I love different. the guy. Yeah. I love the guy. And then and then I got to go with Koyo Fujita just because there is going to be a strong scope element which which by the way is why I put Milliken in there. Mil you know, everybody thinks Koyo Fujita is the best scoper out there. Uh he's pretty good at it. So's this guy by the name of Milliken and so's my fifth pick. And also, my fifth pick 
is really good at closing it out. Stetson Blaylock. My top three in no particular order are Matt Airy, John Cox, and Stetson Blaylock. And the man that wins the 2024 Bassmasters Classic <laughs> on Grand Lake of the Cherokees is none other than Matt Airy. Matt Airy. Nice pick. Nice pick. Yeah. I'm writing it down. And you know, you can watch him on social media. He has his own thing going, too. I didn't know if you know that. I, I just, the, here's the deal. You when you can catch them, you can catch them, okay? Yeah. And and I've always I've always said that to be a really good bass fisherman, and and to get into that upper echelon, you got to go anywhere, anytime, any place, and catch five fish a day. Mm -hmm. And he catches five fish every freaking day. He does all the time. That's why he's in the classic every year. He's always the worst. I mean, the motor can snap off the back of his boat, and he brings a limit in. He does. The guy just catches fish. He's. It's funny you say that because I watch his social media, and he does it with uh, Scott Martin and Canterbury. He is the most consistent guy out of those three every time. That's yeah. a pretty good crowd. Yeah, it's yeah. real good crowd. It's a pretty good crowd. I mean, um, I don't know. I just think the guy's unbelievable. Nice pick, George. Out of the box. I didn't see that coming. All right, Nick. I need you to give me your pick now. Your winner. We got your top five. I, I, I want your. I want who's you gave me this astronomical. Well, this guy that I'm going to ball pick, breaking weight. He can do it, and I'm telling you, the more we all thought he couldn't do, he shows that he can and what's possible. I'm going Ben Milliken. Okay. I think he can do it. Wow. Milliken is on the board for Nick's pick. And now, Mike, there's there's only a few guys that you didn't pick so far. So if you had to narrow it down to just one. Okay, now you can't have 10. I know. Just one. I'm Give me one, baby. I am going to go for the shallow water bite to hold out because I think there's enough nooks and crannies that these guys can find them uh, on that lake. The only problem is I think... <laughs> I'm going to pick John Cox, but my only problem with him is he runs an aluminum boat and he might break it in half in 40 mile an hour winds out there in the middle of the, in the middle of the lake. But dude, did you see what he did last year? He split the hull open for about five foot on the bottom. Yeah. Fished the rest of the day. Yeah. And then went and got it welded and fished it the next day. Yeah. My man is a beast. Now he's, he's not hardcore. He's not scared. I got breaking news. Tackle shop live world. Ladies and gentlemen. Skeeter Steve has just checked in. Holy cow. Checked in on the board here. And and, and you want to talk about a homeboy going chalk. <laughs> I'm writing this one down right here. Skeeter Steve. I mean, I breaking uh, radio I silence. I expected a lot more out of you. Breaking radio silence and coming in with his pick of the pick of the tournament. Well, I mean, him and 4.9 million people on BassContest.com. What? Let me guess. Christy. Yep. Yep. I'm writing it down, too. This this freaking guy. I, I'd Steve, love to see your NC2A bracket. You probably got UConn winning everything. Ske Skeeter Steve <laughs> says, Jason Christie hands down, knows the lake better than anyone. Day one and day two on the crankbait. Going to Chuck to spinnerbait on day three. And oh, win. man. Hoping, not scoping, Hoping, baby. not scoping, baby. Yeah, I, I got to tell you guys. So you know who my pick is. Yeah. Yep. We got the whole SFT team But I got to tell you, I hope you and Skeeter Steve are right. Because I'd love to see yeah. chucking and winding, just going yeah. down through. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Well, but there George, you have it. George, how, how was your guy going to win it? What did you think? Matt Airy? Yeah. What do you think the techniques he's Multi. Multi. So Matt Airy is gonna he's gonna scope a little. He didn't rest on that. He didn't rest on that. He learned him some scoping. He's gonna scope a little bit. He's a sight fishing freaking genius. So he's gonna tomorrow he's plucking. He's going out plucking the groceries off the shelf. Um who's this? Matt Airy. Oh, Airy, yeah. The winner of the classic. Yeah. Um 
He's also going to do a little scoping. You know, uh, I think the scopers are going to fare really well, really bad on the last day, really well the first two days. Um, Imagine trying to scope in 40 mile hour winds. Yeah, it's not cool. It's not going to be fun at all. Uh, He's going to do a little scoping. uh, And then, you know, he's a ham and egger too. Don't forget the jig and the spinnerbait when that wind's cranking on Sunday. That's jig spinnerbait crankbait day. And he's going to be right there. I I agree. But you want to know why I went with Milliken? That third day played a role in that because I've watched him fish in really windy conditions. Adverse conditions. And he'll he'll throw those big swim baits. And oh, yeah. Five big bites. Oh, yeah. No, I, I no doubt that guy's going to be a big time player. Um, and that's why he was definitely in my top five, because. I feel like, you know, he he can he can do he can do he can do a lot. He can definitely do a lot. Well, here's the deal. Um. A lot of people, when they see a forecast like this, okay, and they see Sunday, 20 to 30 out of the south with gust of 40, you know, it it it, it, it takes, usually when we fish a local tournament, our saying is it takes 50% of the anglers out of the, get, out of the gate right off the get-go. Yeah. They might as well not even put the boat in the water. Yeah. That doesn't happen in the Elite Series. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't happen in the no, elite series, especially the Bass Master. Classic. Anybody fishing on the last day? Yeah. It. I mean, it could be, it could be the worse, worse than that. Yeah, worse than that. Yeah. But there's certain people that say, "I want that," and Milliken's that guy. He wants that. He'll stand up there in the front deck of that boat and scope and glide bait those big fish. Yeah. Boy, they're they're checking in, people. We got Stephen McGarrigy Milliken. We got Mark Ansla- Anslavar Dark Horse Drew Cook. I like that pick, I liked, Mark. I like I like Drew Cook. He's especially. a bed he's a bed fishing he, genius. He is. We got the Lisa Lake Fish Club at Patrick Walters. We got William Clute. What up, William? Up north there in, in what's about 19 degrees out tonight? <laughs> They're going to ice fish Milliken tomorrow. or Cox? Okay, I don't know if you've been following along there, William, but we need one. <laughs> Mike tried to pick 10. Come on, Bill. Now you're picking two. You can pick one, Bill. I mean, come on. Hey, George, I got to ask you something here. Joseph Coscarillo, also known as Joe. Joe. His mom calls him Joseph. Yeah. BMP. Nice. Oh, I like that. And, and that's a great pick. That is Tony Kazar, Aussie, Jakobson, Jakobson, feel my heart. <laughs> Ray Cruz, Christy, Ray, and okay, all right. Bill Clute, Millie, good. All right, you're you're out. You're you're back on the. You're, I'm gonna write your name down here. Hold up here. <laughs> Clute is Milliken. Yeah, give me a wait there, Clute. Yeah. When you get a minute, these guys are going to catch them big. Oh, now, here's what we're doing here at the shop because you know this is this is our Super Bowl. Okay, this is our Super Bowl. This is big. We're going to be doing live streaming on the big screen Friday and Saturday. And by big screen, I mean modest screen. Big screen. Um, it's real big if you stand real close to it. Yeah, it's we're going to be live scoping. <laughs> That's a big screen TV. Yeah. What do you want? What What do you need? A 70 incher? Now you're cooking. Yeah. Um. Less tackle. <laughs> so, yeah, we would have a bigger TV, but we have baits hung all the ways around it for sale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'll be doing that all day Friday. Tomorrow we'll be here at 9 o'clock with the TV rolling. <clears throat> uh, four, four-ish, 3.30-ish, 3.30-ish to 4-ish. We're going to be going live with the St. Croix physics launch. (laughs) And we will give that its due diligence because um, they're beautiful rods. We're going to be really excited to tell you about them. Yeah. And then we'll go Saturday um, on Fox FS1. We'll have the classic on. And then when they kick out, we'll go right to the streaming and we'll take that right up to closing time. Um, it's going to rain pretty good on Saturday. So the place to be is right here with your best friends from SFT. And we're going to make a little party out of it. 
Yeah, what um that's a good question. What if day two is so bad they have to cancel it? They don't cancel the classic. They don't cancel the day classic. Day three. Day three. There's no canceling. So they if they, would they go over to the second to to Monday? No, there's no canceling. Oh, there's no canceling? No, they're fishing. Uh, this forecast right here is not bad enough. Okay. I didn't know. Grand that was Lake a good is question, like this. Mike. Grand Lake's like this. You yeah. Got the lake and all these arms. Yeah, right. Okay, there will be no canceling. Yeah, that's why. That's what I kind of thought, but I didn't know. I mean, you that's know, that's a good question. I mean, that's a that's know. a very legit question, George. I got to ask you something. So you said something that was really really cool. You said this is a different level. These guys don't care about the weather. This is what they live for. You fished the classic twice for everybody out there. George fished it twice. What does this experience? What does this do to those anglers for those anglers? And what are they feeling right now? Yeah, it's, I mean, first of all, the whole classic week is kind of like, it's too much. I mean, you know, they've been down there. They fished three practice days. Then they rolled into town um, to get checked into the classic hotel. It's pretty cool. They get, you know, they set you up. The boat yard is badass. I mean, you got, you got people washing your boat for you. You know, you're out in the boat yard. You got your, you know, you got anything you want um, help-wise. And, you know, guards, security guards. I mean, you can just leave all your hatch lids open. Nothing's getting stolen. Um, and then, you know, so you got, but you got, you got a dinners to go to. You got, you know, they, they had the, the, the champions party already. You got to get all dressed up for that. You got media. Today was media, you know, which is a whole day of sitting in your boat and having interviews with the press. Nice thing is you can rig while you're doing it. Um, because your time is very limited. You might say, well, you know, they, f they fished Wednesday. Media today, they fished up until Monday. The only day they had nothing to do was Tuesday. And they had to check in to their hotel, so move from where they were to that hotel, and then they had to go to registration. So Wednesday was practice, today's media, tomorrow's a tournament. So your time management is your number one key. <coughs> it's very how many, hard. How many days practice were they allowed to practice? So you had three days. Um, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. No. Uh, you had Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then... And it might have been Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but I think it was Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then Tuesday, you checked into the Classic Hotel. Went out in the boat yard, found your parking spot, you know, did what you did. Wednesday, you had practice. So you had to, you know, make your tackle changes on Tuesday to get ready for Wednesday's practice. You know, that off day, those fish, this time of year, you all know that, mm -hmm. that off day, stuff changes radically. So Wednesday was a readjustment period and a looking period for something new, something different. And then now you're off today. Now, you know, look at this weather forecast. Yeah. Radical changes. We got a live we got a live report here from from I think it was Bob. It was in the 20s every night of his tournament. Um Terrible. so radical changes today, you're off the water. So tomorrow, you got to kind of try to reconnect and then adjust from there. And the key, the key that these guys were doing in that practice last week, they were looking to find like fish, but they probably wanted to catch a lot of bucks. They probably wanted to find a lot of bucks. Cause if you find a lot of bucks, the big girls are coming your way. Or if you find the big fish, you have to say to yourself, where are they going? Because if you caught them last Sunday and you had a 24-pound bag and you start there tomorrow, you're probably gonna, not going to catch anything because they already went somewhere. So that's where these guys are the, are the greatest tacticians in the game, and that's why they're here. Um, for example, let's talk about this. Think about this, people. Nick, Mike. Everybody watching, think about this. 
and I don't mean this in a negative way at all. There's nothing negative about my statement here. But the Bass Pro Tour just had their red crest, and the legal weight, I believe, was 1.8. Might have been 2. Doesn't matter. It's, it's indifferent. Okay? If these guys are going to catch, if they wanted to, they were going to catch 1.8s until they're tired because this lake is polluted with them. So it's a whole entirely different mindset between Redcrest and the Classic. And I'm not comparing, I'm not contrasting, I'm not throwing shade, I'm just telling you how it is. If you could catch 63 one-and-a-half pounders, good for you. You'll be working the Expo on Sunday. Please be at your booth at uh, 9 o'clock when we open. All you want to do is catch, according to Nick, I mean, Jesus Christ, you need like 23 pounds a day just to even see Sunday. Um, So it's a whole different game, right? You, you don't care about catching 47 two-pounders. You, you need to catch one five-pounder and four three-pounders. I think you have to concentrate on on being in the top, you know, in, in contention to win, you know, for day three. That, that I think that's as a mindset, like you were saying, Nick, I think the mindset that all these guys have is I need to be in contention on day three to win the tournament. That's where they want to get, because that's top 10 and that's the final cut and you can only do whatever you can do, you know. But, Not to mention this weather <clears throat> forecast. Yeah. I mean, this anything is, can happen on 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 that this day. This thing is schizophrenic. Well, I mean, anything can happen. Top ten, say say you're out, say you're out by five pounds in the top ten. Maybe maybe out six pounds, or even eight pounds. Because they had some hellacious comebacks. Say it's eight, you're out, out eight pounds, and you got this kind of forecast on Sunday, and it's going to change it for everybody. And you know, you can make a you can make an eight pound swing up in that kind of weather. Oh, that's going to be radical. You know, so it's going to be radical. A I guy think, like Milliken's going to do some damage on I, Sunday. I think a lot of guys in their minds, you know, just you know the way they, the way you, the way you would, the way I would think about the classic would be, you know, I need to, I need to catch it enough fish to to make myself relevant, you know, to win. And if you and after day one and you don't do well, you well, guess what? You're just going to go fishing day two and enjoy yourself. That's pretty much how my classics went. <laughs> you know. Because if it don't happen day one, you're done. You're it's over. If you don't come in and you're not in, uh, you know, the top twenty five after day one, you're you're, you're is, done. This is not a tournament you fish for points. No, you go for the win. And again, another comparison the to the w. Bass Pro Tour. This is not a tournament where you fish for two pounders. No, you are. If you're not catching them in the first day, you come in with a ten pound bag. You're going. You you might as well just go fishing tomorrow and have a good time. I'll tell you, there is something to be said as we picked our picks. The picks that you guys picked is those guys are seasoned vets. Yeah. This this is not too big of a moment for them. Where with my pick, we don't know. This is the biggest moment of his life. Absolutely. Along yeah. with Tyler Williams and yeah. a lot of these other guys. Yeah. This is no just another tournament. Yeah. This is the Bassmaster yeah. Classic. Yeah. And that and that's gonna play on their yeah. on their minds because the Bassmaster Classic is the most intimidating tournament out there. You, you know how much pressure you have on yourself, you know, that's the biggest media event of all fishing and the pressure is immense on you. So it's going to change the way, you know, your men, your mental game's got to be super strong. Well, and not only that, if you win this tournament, I mean, you guys would know more than I do, but this sets you up financially in a totally different way. If you play your cards, right. Um, that's yeah. a big thing. A career change. Well, yeah. it does a lot for you to qualify for it. Yeah. You know, if you can qualify for the classic, you know, that's a that's a that's a clout with potential sponsors or with existing sponsors. So the way these contracts work is like if you make the classic, there's bonus incentives that kick in. It's 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 a lot tailored like a NFL contract. You know, if you if you're a wide receiver and you have X number of catches, then, you know, you're going to get a, you know, a $1.1 million bonus. You see it all the time in that last game of the season when it's completely irrelevant, and they're just they're just running the hell out of a running back, right? 
because he needs 105 yards to hit that $1.1 million bonus. Well, it's the same thing in making the classic. If you can make the classic and you're, you know, you have a paying sponsor or two or five, you know, there's, cl there's clauses in there like, hey, if you make the classic, you know, here's a X number of dollar <clears throat> bonus that you earned right off the get. We're going to cut you a check and send it to you. Um, and there's a lot of incentives based on that in fishing angler of the year. Boom. You get this, you get this cut, um, you know, number of, number of shots, you know, if you have TV days and we get our logos in those shots, that's why like you see logos in the craziest places on boats, right? Yeah. Um, it's the classic. It's the big time. It's our NFL Super Bowl. Um, I know you guys all love it and gals. Yeah. And we're going to have so much fun with it. Next week, we're going to break it down. We're going to have storylines. We're going to talk techniques. We're going to try to learn a few things based upon what these guys do. We're going to try to learn. We're going to break it down. We're going to cut those techniques down to where we all pick up a nugget or two. And... Uh, Skeeter Steve We're going to see how these, uh, as you know, we have a $5,000 wager on the line here. I don't uh -oh. know if you knew that there, Bill Clute. 5K, uh, baby. Steve, Skeeter Steve put down, oh, 5810 for Skeeter Steve. Oh, ho, ho. Yeah, I figures he'd go right between. And you know what's cool, George? I'm going to be talking to him on Saturday, man. You broke, broke yeah. down the baits that yeah. may play. That's the way he rolls. He but does you, that. You I love know it. there's going to be a few little wrinkles mixed in there that we're like, we didn't yeah. see that coming. Yeah. Yeah, so next week our goal is going to be to take and break down the classic. But what we're going to do is we're going to break it down from the perspective of what these guys did. Pat and then we're going to break it. The, the patterns. Yeah, no, we're going to break it down to how can we better our fishing? You know, how do we take what, you know, Milliken did with his glide bait? How do we take with what Cox did with his his uh, general, blah, 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 blah? How does that, how, how can we make ourselves better doing that? What, you know, how, yeah. how, how do we do it? How's the nuts and bolts, the tackle and the techniques? What, what kind of water? What kind of conditions? How do I know when to choose it? That's next week's show. Can't wait. But right now, it's all about the classic. It's all about the classic. Thanks for watching. Yeah, it's all about the classic. Um, and we will see you guys next time on Tackle Shop Live. You took my breath away A young and pretty You wasn't just a dream The next day You called me up You told me I'm your little buttercup You came over And you fell into my arms Well I know what I feel Please tell me Your love is real You make me smile When I think of you If I Soaked in sweat, with chills running down my neck. I thought we're crazy from just the thought of you.